right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, follow us on social media. Today, my very, very good friend, uh, Las Vegas artist, Rakol Batdorf is on the podcast. Hi. Oh, how you doing? Um, more than well. How are you? You are doing very well. You look fabulous. <laughs> thank you. I feel really good. Yeah. You look great too. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, I tried to do, you know, what I can in my spare time. But man, you're just you're just crushing it, you know? Like I just uh you just, you you've clearly been exercising like crazy. Right? No. No? <laughs> no. Oh. Maybe dancing a little bit here and there. Dancing? Getting out of the house. Yeah? Drinking a lot of coffee. Oh. The espresso diet. The espresso diet. Is that what's working for you? <laughs> Always. Whatever you're doing, it is working. Thank Keep you. it up. <laughs> you know? God damn. I love it. That's fantastic to see you so healthy and happy and uh, and kicking ass, man. Yeah. So you had a local uh, art show recently, right? Um, I did. I was actually featured uh, last first Friday at a studio called Kodo. And uh, it is a monthly art show put on by the Leisure Studio. Um, they'll be featuring me every month, I believe, moving forward. Uh, that's at 8 East Charleston. It's right next door to the Cornish Pasty across from the uh, Arts Factory. Yeah. Uh, so it's a free, sh- it's not free. There's a small cover, I take it back. But there's DJs and drinks. Um, it's a really nicely done, nicely produced show with a lot of talented artists featured. That's fantastic. Yeah. You got your, uh, you got a show going on finally, huh? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's just a, I'm one of the featured artists for that one. So we're still working towards like a solo exhibit one day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you deserve it. I love your art. Thank you. We have some of your art right behind you, actually. Oh. It's, uh, well, the shot's not quite narrowed in on the, <laughs> the art there, but uh, I've been, we've been enjoying hanging, uh, piece of art behind our guests you know we've been featuring some of uh angela's art and now we got some of your art up there yeah her stuff is great yeah love love we got some see. of your art in the living room as well we really love i saw when i walked in it's gorgeous hanging there framed it's always so nice to see them framed and matted in the way it's not just a raw piece of canvas to flung up on the wall it's nice to see them treated well yeah well we really mm-hmm. cherish it it's a beautiful piece of work you did we'll probably end up getting some more from you soon oh i hope so <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. so what's been keeping you busy anyways you've been uh what you, you got a new gig going on um i'm working a lot so i do i still along with doing my art and stuff i'm working full time to like 55 hours a week right now yeah. um i'm working for kind of a heavy heavy hitter in the adult industry but oh, i don't make adult <laughs> content this is i work on the back end no pun intended <laughs> uh, so kind of like the legal side we kind of make yeah. sure uh, people are coming responsibly <laughs> you know what uh, i mean so if it's, it's gross stuff we make sure it gets taken down um You know, just keeping things as kosher as that line of business can be, I guess. (laughs) Fun. Yeah. Um, Aside from that, I I just, I work from home and that's such a great opportunity. I have an art studio in my house. So my office and studio are like the same space and I'm always surrounded by art and encouraged to, I can be on my computer and pick up a paintbrush on the same, at the same time and kind of do both, which is a, a huge blessing. I don't think very many people have the opportunity to be working in their inspiration so um other than i'm mostly just been prepping i'm actually getting ready to show at art basil in miami um art basil is one of the biggest art shows in the world actually they have them in um switzerland hong kong and miami beach and so i'll be showing at the uh, red dot miami the first through the fifth and so that's something i'm really looking forward to um just trying to produce something beautiful enough to to stand up to that show. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, let me check it out here. I got it on the uh, the old computer screen here. It's Art Basel, Miami Beach. Yeah, so this cool. it's, it's a huge deal. Um, I feel so grateful to have been invited to participate. And I'm just right now, um, that's what I'm working on is just nurturing the most beautiful piece that I can. I'm showing one 12 by 12 unframed piece. And it kind of has to just speak for itself. So that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty intimidating. Good for you. <laughs> it's a big. It's a big deal. I don't. I oddly uh-huh. feel at peace. I feel like I worked so hard on on developing a certain style, and I kind of uh, have done it a ton of times, and I, I have a better grasp about what works and what doesn't, and the 
how the chemicals react with each other when it comes to the paint. Uh, it's a lot of trial and error and actually just doing it. You can't learn a lot of a lot of anything in art unless you actually just try it and see how it works. So what is your process when you go into making one of these beautiful pieces? Uh, I work actually with, a lot of people ask me if it's poor, but it is not. I work with acrylic inks. Uh, so they're little highly pigmented little bottles of ink. Um, and sometimes I'll move them around with water or other mediums. It's uh, interesting. I lay down the background first, and sometimes that can take weeks or months uh, just for me to get it right. And then I'll go in with the line work and... Every piece is completely random. It's really hard for me to know. Uh, I can kind of have an idea of where, like, the darkest parts of the piece might show up at the end and the brightest parts. But other than that, it's, it's very intuitive. And uh, the, the piece kind of guides me into what it, it's going to be. Okay, yeah. I wanted to pull up some of your art here on the, uh, the Instagram. So I love some of the stuff. It always reminds me of, like, almost like... Um, like psilocybin mushroom experiences a little bit. Totally. It's so funny. I, a lot of people ask me, like, have you ever tripped on mushrooms and stuff? And I was like, I have definitely done that, but I have not done it in so long that I've never tripped on my own art. <laughs> so oh, yeah. It's been a while. It's definitely influenced by that for sure. I loved this piece. It was so fun to make. Um, this one is actually made with Culture Hustle brand. It's an artist called Stuart Semple, and he actually creates those that – silver metallic color you're seeing is called liquid mirror and it's created in a laboratory so it's not even a paint it's a chemical i'm working with and oh interesting you know, highly highly reflective it's made um to kind of look like the stuff that they painted the bean in in chicago the the cloud gate piece okay. done by anish kapoor i don't know if you know the bean is what yeah. it's called in chicago yep. I, mean, I don't know cloud, what you're talking cloud about Cloudgate is what the technical term is oh okay cloud um, oh yeah here we go we got cloud gate pulled yeah. up here Awesome. Let me see if I can get a big picture of it here. Yeah, so that last painting you saw with the pink and the mirror, uh, that mirror is made to... And okay. then there's that asshole. Yeah, what the hell <laughs> That's Anish Kapoor. He's the guy who created okay. that piece. Yeah. Oh, this didn't work out as well as I thought it was going to. Let me go back and find a good image of that thing. That's a good image of that thing here. Cool. So this is what you're talking about right here. Yeah. So that's that that mirror that you're seeing there is a paint. So. Oh, or a chemical as you as it yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It was painted on, but it's a chemical. <laughs> Interesting. And it just looks like a friggin' mirror. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Have you been there? I haven't. Oh, no, I've been to Chicago, but I didn't go see this piece yeah, in particular. It's very cool. It's fun. Yeah. You can go all under, underneath it, and like every, it gives you different view from everywhere. It reflects the city and the clouds back behind it. It's really pretty. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. That guy who made it is an asshole, though. <laughs> is he? Why, <laughs> he <laughs> why is. is he an asshole? Okay, so I guess his story is that he's created certain pigments and colors. Uh, he creates paint, but he'll say, like no other artist can use it. And he copyrights them and trademarks these products so no other artist can experiment with them. What? So, yeah, so the, and so he's an asshole. So the other product I use, Stuart Semple's Culture Hustle, his whole thing is bringing art to the masses. So he takes things that are, like Vanta Black is the blackest black, and I use that a lot in yeah. my paintings. Um, Vanta Black was made by Anish Kapoor, and he said no one else can use it. So Stuart <laughs> Semple went in his laboratory and created Black 3.0, which is his answer to, and it's like a even matter deeper black. And he said everyone but Anish Kapoor can purchase this. And when you go on his website and order paints and products. Whoa. That fell. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Let's just leave it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. That's crazy. It's like, I think that I. Why did that fall? Angela hung it. It's her fault. No, I think I might have done it. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -oh. It was a shoddy job on my part. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, where were you? That startled me. <laughs> that startled me too. The blackest black times okay. infinity. Okay. okay, yeah, yeah. So, Stuart Simple, when you purchase products from his site, it, it makes you sign a thing saying that you are not, in fact, Anish Kapoor trying to purchase. So, any <laughs> artist in the world can use his, his products except uh, for this guy who's trying to shut down artists all over. So. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, that's prioritize that's his uh, his specific art to where you know, nobody can actually experiment. That's that's kind of shady. Yeah. It's just like there's a reason he's, he's disliked in yeah. the community. Yeah. He's also a bajillionaire who sells a ton of art. So. Well, Who's right? <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's uh. Well, if it's working for him, you know, keep it up. I don't know what you're gonna do, right? Yeah. Jeez, jeez, Louise. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, I just you know, my brain isn't quite firing on all cylinders today. I'm trying to pull up stuff out of my brain and just like no sleep for two days. That's okay. What have you? Yeah. Um... But uh, no, what you been doing out uh out for fun? Like, uh, you been seeing any shows? Did you go to Life Is Beautiful? Do you go into EDC this weekend? No. Oh my gosh, I think I said it before. I uh, I used to go to a lot of shows and concerts, as you know, and I really don't go to any at all anymore. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think the next show that I'm actually looking forward to it might be uh, Rufus Du Soul, which is like dance music, trancey stuff, and like. It's music I play when I paint a lot, and I'm like, oh, I never go to shows anymore, and I've noticed that. I think in the past, I've been dragged along to a lot of shows that other people like. You know what I mean? It's that they're not my bands. I just happen to be, like, at this show. Um, maybe not, like, quite gassed up or excited about it, just there, you know? And I was like, maybe I'd get back into music if I started going to, like, the bands that I actually like and listen to. You know, like that, like I have some that I, I, I team to I tend to play regularly while I'm painting and I'm like, I need to go check that out. And that's how I'll get inspired again and want to be. Maybe I'll find my like concert tribe, people I want to be around at a show or something if it's more up my alley. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love to go check out that with you. I don't know who they are, but uh, I'm always looking for new oh. artists and I love going to a random show I've never been a part of. We so. should go. I think it's yeah. at, like the downtown event center in November, December or something. Is and, it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would be fun. It'd be nice to go with somebody because I say I want to go and then I'm like, I'll buy a ticket alone and go. No, I'll buy a ticket and then I'll stay home and, and have paid ah. for a ticket. <laughs> yeah, I uh, the last time I did that, I went and saw Young the Giant for the first time in like 2019. I had no idea who they were. Was and, it good? Oh, it was amazing. They're like one of my favorite bands now. You oh, know? It's fun. like that experience of discovering their music live for the first time. And I mean, and they're a really good band regardless. So, yeah. but it was, yeah, it was super fantastic, man. So I, I would love to keep doing that kind of thing and just go to random concerts. You know? Yeah. I also, I don't know if this is a touchy subject. I'm not vaccinated. No. So no. I can't go to no shows. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could go, if I planned on it, um, I like, I know I'm gonna have to go get, Florida doesn't give a damn. I'm going to Miami for my shows. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I was like, they don't give a shit. DeSantis is the man. Yeah. I'm know? not, uh, I wouldn't call myself an anti-vaxxer. I just happen to not be vaccinated. <laughs> yeah. so, well, it's a scary thing. Ever, it's like there's a lot of weird side effects that go on. No, and, you I, know, I don't tell anybody. This is the thing is I also find that like a lot of people find use Instagram as their political platform or whatever your your emotional feeling is about things. They seem where they, they post it up and like Instagram and Facebook are not my political platform. I my beliefs don't have anything to do with yours you know what i mean so like i don't ever tell anybody i just keep my mouth shut usually when it talk when it comes to like vaccination talk but i would never tell somebody don't go get vaccinated i don't know enough i know what feels right for me as a human being and i believe in autonomy and that's what makes us independent human beings and not part of like a i don't know i i believe in my autonomy at least yeah (laughs) Yeah. forcing people to get vaccinated is ridiculous like it's just it's it's it's, weird it's a violation of your human rights man and it's not okay to do to people like people don't want to do it they shouldn't have to get vaccinated yeah and 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 i i get like saying um you know you can't go to big concerts or whatever without it i mean that sucks and it should really be more of a thing where if you don't have COVID or if you have the antibodies it seems like just an agenda, really, for them to force the vaccination on people. It's very, it's, it's, it's it feels weird to yeah. me. My instincts, I know they say you shouldn't follow your instincts, you should follow science. Love science. I think that science has proven a lot of stuff, but it just feels wrong right now. Maybe in a year or so or something. I don't also feel like I'm at risk for COVID. I'm very, I'm healthy and uh, mm. all, all the old people around me are vaccinated. Yeah, I had to, I had to get it for work. And I got all, a bunch of side effects from it. I mean, it made me really feel shitty. Like uh, I, I had so- all kinds of problems with my sinuses, headaches for days, and like I was getting heart pain and stuff like that. You oh know, like all that stuff, man, was happening. And I'm extremely healthy guy. Like I just, I really oh, try I to take care of my body. So it's like when I put that stuff in me, it really, I really felt it. Like it, it hurts. So it's like, it's not a joke when you go get that thing, man. Well, I think it would just be really frustrating as a person. I don't get ill very often. Like maybe once every two years, one thing will get me down for a few days, but I've never been a sick person. I'm a a very healthy person. Drink lots of water and green teas. And you know what I mean? I try to do it like the second I feel like even a tickle coming on in my throat, I nurse myself down, you know, and like 
do the good things for my body. But I don't know. I just don't feel I feel like it would be really, really upsetting to feel so healthy and then to take something that's supposed to make me not get sick and then have all of those effects and feel sick from it, which I know that yeah. it it replicates the symptoms or whatever, but it just seems really like counterintuitive. It is. It's for me personally, and uh, it might sound like conspiracy theory or whatever, but it's just, it's another step in the direction of taking our, our power away from us. You know, they're just like, it's been going on for like 20 years. Like it started in, you know, with like 9-11 and the NSA and all that stuff where they yeah. just started invading our privacy, taking away our rights, and they've been slowly doing it. And then it was just like, now this is just another step. It's like, let's see if we can force the entire population crazy. to inject this shit in their body. And then, and then, uh, and, then and then, how and many people just did? Yeah. <laughs> like, and, you know, and no questions asked. Okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's, you know, the people are scared of the virus and I get that. And so it's like, uh. Yeah, and, and it's, I'm sure it's a good thing that a lot of people are getting it done, but uh, like a both, both of us are just everyone? like, I guess it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Anything uh, forced is uh, the forcing. It's the forcing. It's yeah. the same way where like I would never. It's the same way I feel about I'm pro-choice when it comes to abortions, but I wouldn't have an abortion. Yeah. I don't think you know, you never know what you would do until you're in that yeah. position. I don't know. I think you actually should have the option available to you if you need it, and I would never yeah. judge anybody for doing so. Well, it's, it's the same. None sa of anybody's it's the same business. Exact it's argument, your body. You know I mean? It's like my body, my choice, but that's not a thing anymore. Or, or like how HIPAA. But they're asking, like HIPAA exists yet. They're asking for your medical documents when you step out into a place. I just think it's just yeah. Yeah, you don't have to share your medical records with anybody. Yeah, but now you do. <laughs> it's just another. It's just another uh, freedom they've taken away from us. It's another right. You know, you're just like your private information's out there, and you have to show your papers to get around. It's the same shit that they did in Nazi Germany and Russia, and the, you know, it's just like. The fucking whole papers please thing, man. It's the just, papers it's, please it's thing gross. is bothersome. Yeah, it's trouble. It's problematic <laughs> to yeah. say the least. And it's just another step in the wrong direction. It's another step away from freedom. And I that's, think it's that's interesting. really my problem with it. I think it's interesting how all of this happening has like realigned my political values as well. Like I felt yeah. like I felt a whole other. It's complete changed like how I think about the world and how humans interact with each other and like what I don't know. It's we're in strange, strange times. I think it, the key is to get off the fucking internet. Well. Yeah. <laughs> because I notice that when I'm around my people in real life and interacting with humans, people aren't nasty. And, like, there's a lot of stuff I see that's, like, put into our atmosphere. Like, when you're all looking at a phone 24 hours a day, that they're going to tell us that things are also worse than they are, I feel like. Like, that we're in this, like, state of, like... I've, I've read articles that say we're like on the brink of civil war. You know what I mean? And I'm like on the internet, yeah, it feels really like that. Are. It feels like that on the internet. But like when I step out and see how humans interact, they're nice. Like we're all yeah. good to each other. I'm just like, I feel very conflicted about what's actually going on. Well, it's like when you're in a car and everyone's acting like an asshole, right? And, and like you're protected by this big steel trap so you can just be the shittiest version of yourself and rage and swerve in and out and cut people off and be rude and scream at people. And it's like, what? I'm in a giant car going 65 miles an hour. No one's going to do anything to me, <laughs> you know? And it's the same thing with the internet. It's like, I'm hiding behind my phone. I could be the biggest piece of shit in the world. What are you going to do, you know? Send some words back my way, you know? Block me? Oh, but when you're in person, it's like, no, I'll hit you in the fucking face, <laughs> you know? And they're like, yeah, there's that reality of like, yeah. I might get my ass kicked, so I probably should have some kind of manners. And it's like, you should have manners all the time, though, but... People get in these situations where they feel, you know, impervious, and then they just they the real version of themselves comes out. This this terrible person they're not taking care of. You know, you you got to take care of your your consciousness and your subconsciousness and your unconsciousness and like, no one's doing that. They just they just uh, develop this this shit person inside of themselves, and they let it just rage all over the place all the time. Yeah, I c I could definitely agree with that. I feel like it's. Yeah, you got to take uh, accountability, I feel like. And, like, um, my whole year, my whole last couple of years, it's so funny when they say you've, like, it sounds so corny, but they say you've, like, go out and find yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, like, literally, like, find yourself. It's so important. Like, you could float around and be this version of all these people affecting you all over. But, like, when I was a small kid, the thing that would bring me the most peace would be, like, making art. And then at some point, somebody said something to me 
about it and maybe not being good enough or who knows, you know what I mean? Uh, and I turned away from that, even though that's my natural state is to be creative. And it's, it's what brings me away from all of the anxiety of wondering about every other thing in my life. It's my thing that brings me present. Yeah. And I think most people, when they say find yourself, it's because you lose that young, innocent version of you that knows what it is that connects you with the universe. That's the thing that connects me to my source. That's how I, when I feel like I'm downloading information from the universe and I'm on track of where I need to be, that's what I'm doing. And it's what I was doing at the very beginning of my existence on this earth. Yeah. And then I lost sight of it and then I found it again. And I'm like, it's so weird to not feel like you have a purpose through most of your life and then finally feel like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like very, uh, it's good for your soul and I think for your self-esteem and you can't do anything in this world without self-esteem. Yeah. Yeah. You got to feel good about yourself. Do you ever see that movie Soul? It's like a Pixar or Disney movie. Oh, is that what with all the little colored it's, things? It's Yeah. It's about the jazz piano player oh. who is a teacher and like he dies and he falls in the manhole or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i that think whole i saw concept it. of purpose in that movie i thought was really good because he just felt like this was my reason for existing and he goes through this whole process of like realizing that like life is this beautiful thing like there's not one direct purpose that you have to be following it's just like anything can give meaning and, and, and value to, to your day or to your existence, you know? And it's like, just, just do. Or picking the right things. The, the things, Picking you know? the right experiences, the things yeah. that light you up in the right, bright ways. Um, you know, when you're younger, it's easy to fall into like drinking and partying. That feels good in the moment, but it doesn't ever really feel good long term. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, there are just it's other. empty, man. Yeah. There's other things that can totally, that light me up more nowadays, I guess. And, um. And the universe, they feel better in my universe. Like, I don't feel, I don't ever go in my studio and spend hours and hours and hours and lose time to that and then feel bad about doing that. No. But you know what I mean? When you, like, black out for a few hours and you lose all that time, it feels awful. Because your time is valuable on this earth. And if you can create something beautiful on the other end of it, that's more fulfilling, I think. I, I agree with that 100%. I really, uh, I've started doing um, some small art projects since it takes like a whole day to finish one of them. They take forever. Yeah. <laughs> they take a long time. But it's like I look at that and uh, as I pass by it the, the, the preceding days, you know, and it's like, uh, man, I'm so glad I did that. Uh, you know, I can't believe I accomplished that, that beautiful thing that is, you know, sitting there on the wall. And it's just like, it's such a more fulfilling way to exist. The, the process is cool, too, because you change. So when you can start an art project and then I, I have to look at mine for months sometimes before I even have a clue what to do with the next step. Sometimes I'm like, I'm stumped. I don't have a clue. Yeah. But then I change and I have more experiences and my brain works different after a few months or weeks or, you know, and then I have an answer. And I love that um, art is basically I'm creating like problems and then I'm I'm creating the problem <laughs> the second I pour some paint down on a, on a canvas. And then I, my job is to find a creative, beautiful solution. And when I was younger, I'd get stuck in this uh, cycle of putting myself <laughs> into a state of a problem because <laughs> it feels familiar, right? That state of trauma and not knowing what's going to happen. But now I put myself into like a, a more comfortable problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm still uncomfortable. I still put myself into the uncomfortable state, but it's for a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been finding myself uh, going in a lot of different directions with the, the art stuff that I've been getting into, man. And it's fun to just like dive into something. Are you painting? And I'm painting and I'm drawing and um, I really enjoy doing like these sacred geometry sketches. And uh, I can sh I can show you one I did yeah. on, uh, I posted it on Instagram so I can put it on the screen and everything. But uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's been really cool, and it takes a long time. It's like meditative almost. You just I always so when I do my line work that I do, which is a little more curvy worthy, but basically it's it's curvy worthy. Curvy worthy. I dig that. Um, Man. it it helps me have in mind a beginning, a starting point, and an ending point for each task. Yeah, there's a beginning and an end, and it's it's. You can't have anxiety while you're focused on a beginning and an end for, for a project, right? Like, I have a task at mind. It's like what I'm focused on is these lines, making them lovely, and everything else just goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I started doing these things right here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, that's a, um, that's a geometric eye. 
What are you using to make that? That's just, um, I, I draw it with pencil and then I color it in with permanent marker. And awesome. uh, yeah, it's all done. It's just mathematics. So like, I love this shot too, where you can see all the, the math that goes into the process. And then essentially I just keep dr using a compass to draw tighter and tighter circles mm -hmm. as I go around. And then uh, this reminds me, vice versa. do you remember in the nineties they had that, um, not magna doodle, but they had that thing. They'd sell you with all the different compasses and they'd link in with each other and you could draw up the something gram. Yeah. Was yeah. It? That was a um, spirograph. Spirograph? Spirogram, something like that. That might have, they were so, I mean, that's some early stage <laughs> creation stuff. And yeah. the magna doodle. How yeah, many artists? Spirograph. <laughs> Let's see. Let how many see. artists Hold got their start on the magna doodle? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I, I think it's this thing right here, right? Where you do these kind of dinguses. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's sacred geometry. Look at it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing what you can do with this kind of stuff. I really love it. And uh, I don't keep a compass in my house because I'll stab myself with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's done freehand. I just got a really big one. It's like, it's like that. And you can, you, I mean, you can get some big freaking circles out of the deal. I had to buy uh, the other day. It's uh, art supplies are interesting. And the stuff that you decide like you need to have in your house. Yeah. Um, I went through this panic. I've been working on raw canvas and I need a way to like trim it up nicely, you know. And I'm trying to like shake teacher friends down. I'm like, do you guys have a guillotine? And they're like, a what? <laughs> like, you know, the big paper, the big oh, paper cutters. Yeah, big paper cutter. I bought one of those the other day. I was like, gosh, is this what life is? And I'm just going to be like, they're yeah. expensive. They're going to get a Yeah. And I now I have one in my house. And I'm like, this doesn't store well anywhere. No. <laughs> and I only need it every once in a while. Um, I found good purpose for that thing. I made, I did a Halloween crafts the other oh, day. Really? And I was like, I'll just slice up those chain links decorations right with my own guillotine <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is a that's a serious piece of art equipment right there you gotta have a big table to I put like that on we're talking equipment while we're in this room <laughs> yeah oh i know <laughs> this is the room my room is ridiculous this is ridiculous it's, uh, this is a lot full of, stuff. of gear i love it there's it's... a lot of stuff this is a good booby shot oh yeah that is yeah. a good booby shot <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> thanks you're welcome everybody <laughs> Uh, that's great. No, yeah, it's uh, it's fun to have my little uh, Space Brain Studio here, Space Brain Station Studios. Are you doing these weekly? I'm doing them weekly. Every Monday I put one out. It is really hard to keep up with. I might actually miss next Monday because I'm like, I'm trying to get someone last minute to come in, but I'm I'm totally booked all the way through next Monday, and I'm going to be out of town for a while, oh, and it's no. like... Oh, you need to have some like yeah. back, back loaded. Yeah, I did. I, I usually get like three or four in a row, but we just back loaded and then we went for two weeks on a road trip, which I got some great footage I'll be putting online as well. Oh, I uh, okay. Andrew yeah. was telling me a little about that. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you about Didn't, that. Tell yeah. me more. We do Arkansas. We did Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. So we, we drove, which was a trip. I mean, it's a 20 hour drive out there. And uh, so we went through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma. Can Arkansas and uh, and then up into Missouri for a little while too. We stayed at this lake in Missouri okay. in this beautiful Ozarks? cabin. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. totally the Ozarks. Oh yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous up there. And uh, I took my drone. We did all kinds of crazy stuff. And like they have, um, family friends have this cabin up on top of a mountain, and they have like bunch of ATVs and so they took us uh, out. I was riding ATVs through the forest yeah. for like four hours. Yeah, dope. My uh, my dad lives in Tennessee and like I used to spend every summer and every other Christmas out there. Okay. And so I got a taste of like that rugged you know, the, like we'd go in the woods and yeah. my dad would send me with like a rifle with some snake shot in it. <laughs> it's like, don't get bit. <laughs> don't get bit by a snake. Um, but same thing, we would go like ripping through on four wheelers and the woods are so tight there. Like I remember I would take my little brother on the back of the four wheeler and he'd be so terrified because I'd be whipping through the trees that by the time I got off, my legs would just be burnt up because he'd be squeezing me so tight. Oh yeah. So we didn't go, yeah, like he'd be so scared, but it's just so different. Like the outdoors is so gorgeous out in the south. I you really unless you go there, it's, it's really it's hard beautiful. to like stupid beautiful. Yeah, they'll just be like I try to explain how you, you could be driving and then there are natural waterfalls on either side of the road yeah. and like 
the trees change colors, which is for us. I mean, when I see the trees change, I'm like, I'm seeing something special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happened so fast, too. Like, we went out the early October this year, and they were just starting to change. And we went out early November last year, and they, they were like, you just missed it. Oh, and so it was they're like gone? This two to three week period where the leaves change and then they fall off and then they're gone. Well, yeah, in the South, it's so funny because the woods are so deep there that in the summertime, you can't see your next neighbor's porch light even. Oh, wow. And then in the winter, when all their leaves fall off, you're like, oh, there's a neighbor like a mile and a half from here. <laughs> like, you don't realize yeah. like that there's people around because it's so lush. Um, I kind of miss the South now. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's friggin' beautiful out there. I love it. We'll wait till the spring to go. It's it's a little gross this time of year. Yeah. In the winter, mm. it's not too bad. I mean, it's uh, well, it's still fall, you know. So it's it's really not too bad. Like, I mean, I was still rocking shorts, and maybe when the sun went down, I might put a, a light sweater on. But it was uh, it was really nice. I really enjoyed, it. especially leaving Vegas and then going all the way out there. It was still like ninety to hundred when I left, and uh, so, like, so it was really refreshing. Nice. Did you? Where are you going next week? You said you're traveling. Oh, I'm going to San Diego. I'm nice. just working. You know, work's back, so now I'm flying around and, and doing shows. And I uh, just got back from a show today. You know, and I, uh, we're you know sneaking it in because it's like this the yeah, the calendar's filling up. Are you guys like doing anything fun in San Diego? Or you just all work? No, that's for me. Yeah, I'm just going by myself. Oh, I'm just uh, we're driving out there with a company called SDG, and we're doing this. Um, it's like a doctor's convention or something like that, and slap up some PA and put mics on some doctors, yep. and they're going to talk for a little <laughs> while. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that's exactly it, right? Yeah, you love that. I do uh, love that. Yeah, <laughs> it takes the, me back to a different time. The uh, she's referring to my sound checking voice. He's got a sound check thing. It's specifically his, and you could be outside of a venue, <laughs> and then know it's him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody's got that unique uh, that unique thing they do whenever they're checking microphones as an engineer. I love it. It's uh, it's one of the like little intricacies <laughs> of the gig. But it's fun. It's fun. I love doing what I do. You know, I get to play with cool toys. That's why I, I do this thing, you know, because it's like uh, it's it's an offshoot of what I do well, for a like living as hobby. it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You like love it already. Yeah. I'm, already I'm always good just at it. every time I see you do this, I'm just like, I can't even <laughs> understand <laughs> yeah. how this. Dude, you should see the stuff we set up at the big shows. It's wild. You know, it's uh, it's just a friggin wall of racks and. You know, all kinds of cool stuff going on and flying big line arrays in the air. And it's still like I've been doing it forever. Like uh, professionally, I've been doing it since 2007 out here in Las Vegas. But I've been doing it as an amateur since I was like 15. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I just and I still I still we put a line array up or if, if I even if I didn't put it up and I just walk in I'm just like look at those speakers man <laughs> you're just still How stoked cool on is that? that yeah I just I can't get over it I friggin love it it's just it's it's so beautiful to get to do for a living I'm just blessed and I just I can't how's I can't your hearing I like how, how when, thankful I am I like how when we worked at the uh, music venue together Everyone told me to wear earplugs. Yes. <laughs> and I never did. My ear is so messed up from walking past that big stack every oh, night to God. get into the, to the green room. I'm so sorry. No, oh, my God. You're, you, AOL was loud as hell, but I was young. And I was like, I don't need no stinking headphones. How yes, can I hear? I yeah, I sure did. My hearing is wrecked now from just those years of working in the club. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine, too. It's not good. I, I, uh, I yeah, tonight is up the ass. The other day, I got a cr I got credited with helping my best friend's little girl learn how to read. They're like, she always puts the words up on the screen, and I was like, <laughs> oh no, no! I was like, I didn't do anything other than just be hard of hearing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't teaching your kid how to read. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't hear. <laughs> we do the same thing, man. Yeah. And it's like I I love the subtitles. I love them. Yeah, I miss a lot. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I missed until I saw it. Like. A show I know about, like the, any of the Chappelle shows, if you go wa go oh, yeah. back and watch them with headphones, or not headphones, but with subtitles, you know, I'm just like, wow, I thought he was funny before, and now I, I missed half of the jokes, you know, like, yeah, my ears are pretty bad. <laughs> uh, and you don't really, like, you think you heard what they said, and then you read the subtitles, and you're it's like, better. oh, is that it's what they're better. saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's better. 
Yeah, I love it. So uh, it's it's always on. Every just, single thing we do, it's always subtitles. I just watched uh, Pimps Up, Hose Down, which Pimps is Pimps Up, Hose Down, which is Do where, well, it's where like uh, Chappelle's. He has a whole skeet belt, skeet, skeet, scallywags and hula hoos or whatever. And it's oh. where that whole thing comes from. It's the real pimps and, and hoes. And like, uh, it's wild. I didn't even know that that was reality. Is pimps up, hose down. Is this what it is right here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's basically what, what, what inspired that skit. It's, it's pretty juicy. That's I would awesome. pull it up sometime. Oh, okay, HBO documentary from 1998. Oh, oh. it's good. <laughs> There's okay. a lot of yeah. It's like uh, check it out in your free time. Yeah, right. It's, it's where those jokes all came from. So you could just imagine the characters, like, like Magic John, Magic Don Juan, the pimp, and then there's a guy called. Uh, hold on, let me think of his name. White folk. <laughs> white folk. <laughs> he's he's like the only white pimp. Uh, it's pretty good. Oh, Funny. I think I got a picture of white folk right here. Is this white folk? <laughs> That's white folk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, white uh, folk. It's a great documentary, you guys. Should, um, it's something my it was on me. My friend were watching it. My sister came in and like, it definitely shows like some Atlanta strip club activity and stuff. And oh, my sister's nice. like. Since when do you watch stuff like this? I was like, it's a documentary, I swear. I'm not just watching, like... Uh, (laughs) That's great. Yeah, real life is so much stranger than fiction. Like, you can't even... Like, you think think you're watching some kind of uh, interesting fictional story, and you're like, how creative is that? And then you put on real life, and you're like, this is fucking wild. I think I prefer documentaries. Yeah. Yeah, when the shit gets real, real. I'm watching the um, (laughs) one on HBO with the the chick with the weight Lost cult, uh, oh, Gwen something. Oh yeah, I right? just watched the whole thing too. Did, um, yeah, oh, man, her the, hair is amazing. <laughs> no, her hair is crazy. It gets crazier. I like everyone's like, well, no one's gonna tell her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, she's uh, the leader of the cult. It's like she could have the most batshit crazy hair in the world. No one's okay. gonna say anything to I, you. I just I binged this in like one day as well when I was working one day. Um, so she. The I know way what she said. Down. Oh yeah, so you um this is how you lose weight. You ask Jesus to tell you when to stop eating. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and then you, you starve yourself like the people in the Holocaust. And they're like, Did you really just compare your weight that. loss to she's the like, Holocaust? And she goes, What? What's the problem she's with like, that? She's like, They did lose weight. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> it's like, You're out of your fucking mind. Yeah, no. Oh, and then the fact oh. that they all died. Yeah. Oh, the, my oh dude, you're spoiler. I haven't seen the last oh, one. Oh, no. No. One, I, oh. the, the second episode. Just kidding. And uh, like, someone walks just, away from that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Am I supposed to? Huh? Nothing. Are you supposed to what? You can do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. I like those rules. Yeah. Yeah. There's no Set. rules. In the, you know, say no whatever rules. you want. Do whatever you want. We're here to just hang out and, and talk shit, man. It's nothing. This isn't serious. It's just like life. Don't take it seriously. Yeah. This is just a game we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Not to be taken seriously. Uh, what are you doing for Halloween? I am uh, working. I'm leaving. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll be. I think I'll be driving back from San Diego on Halloween. Although I might try to stay one more night and like find my own way back and gas uh, lamp. Gas lamp. do something interesting out there because I, I like to do that. And I like it's you know it's a lot of guys I know they travel all over the world and they just get on the plane, do the job, get back on the plane. Dude. And it's like, I always try to um, schedule time for myself whenever I'm booking my flights to like get in super early or leave super late so that there's like free time for me to experience the city I'm in for just a, like Dude, a few I, hours. I think that's so much. So when I dated my ex, he was a musician and I, he'd take me on tour with him. He'd been all over the world multiple times and he hadn't seen anything. And I was yeah. just like, he's like, Dude, is it my time? Like I come in, I... I sleep I go play the show get back on the bus you know what I mean get back on a plane and I always made it a point no matter what city we went to I was like oh no we're getting out there like wake up and he's like I've seen more traveling with you you know what I mean than I have like all my years of touring I just haven't he hadn't like got out and done it and I was like that's an opportunity to see like a new place to me like I would I even when I have a layover like I flew to Italy one time and I had eight hours or something and I was like, oh no, I'm doing Dusseldorf, Germany. And like I got (laughs) off the plane and went into the city and checked it out and like, yeah, like it just seems like a lost opportunity to experience something new and cool. It's so easy to, uh, 
to let that go by too. Like it's just, uh, you know, you get wrapped up in the travel plans and you're like, I just want to get to my hotel room and relax. I don't feel, I feel like yeah. I am uh, uh, such a happy, I'm, I think maybe it's cause I'm an experienced traveler as well, yeah. but I have like had a, I've, I take it really easy at the travel part. I try not to stress at all. You know what I mean? And like, I, I traveled for 10 years on standby tickets. My brother worked for the airline. So oh, I got, that's awesome. yeah, I got really good. I get like 18 free flights a year and I took advantage of all of them. Nice. Good for you. And, uh, you get really good at learning how to deviate from certain airports that have a little more traffic if it's hard to get out and keeping it cool because there have been times where they're like, yeah, there's no way you're getting out of the city today Yeah, and you think you're stuck, but you're not, if you can be creative, a creative solution to, to your problems is the key. You know what I mean? And like staying, staying calm and creative. Um, other thing is when I travel, I don't make plans. Yeah. Like I may have a thing, maybe a thing I've seen somewhere that I want to, but I do not make plans. That I show up it. and I go find the people who live there. Like I'll go into like a local bar or a local, I don't do the tour shit. I've n- never been like that. Um, and it always just turns into this like completely unique experience and the people I meet are people who might actually be from that place and, and do things there and can kind of show me a different side of of what the town is. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's totally the way to do it. It's uh, plans always just ruin plans, everything. Plans do just stress me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, this is what it happens when we go to Arkansas because Angela has family out there and I'm just, I don't want to do it. And like we went for damn near two weeks and it was like we just couldn't get everything done because everybody's trying to like you know there's like a this schedule, schedule. <laughs> yeah that we're gonna that we're gonna abide by, and it's like man let's just wake up and do see some where the stuff. day goes we can go get some lunch yeah you know and like uh, you and know it's like see. it doesn't matter you know it doesn't friggin matter yeah some of my funnest uh, adventures have actually been like one night I flew into London it was like the first time I'd ever been there yeah and I get there it's like the middle of the night you know and um. My friend's like, I just want to go to sleep. And I was like, well, see ya. <laughs> and yeah. like, like, who cares about any Jack the Ripper? Like, I went right outside into the streets of London by myself. And I found a place <laughs> and found people. And like, it just set the tone for the whole trip. You know, I had such like a great time. And I felt so independent and good. And like, I don't know. I don't know. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It's especially fun to be by yourself in a, in a strange city like that it's with no one. It's the coolest feeling. Yeah. It's the I coolest I love feeling. it. It's it's just liberating. You finally feel you're just like I can do anything. Yeah, yeah. I remember like the the London was my first big trip out of the country, and uh, I was alone there for like four <laughs> days, you know. And I remember standing like out on like uh, the River Thames and being on like the Millennium Bridge or whatever, and just being like, "Who am I?" I had my <laughs> moment when I was like, "I can do anything." You think you can? Yeah, and I was just like, I literally all I did was finally decide I wanted to do something. Like, the power of like visualization and then once you realize what you want literally anything you want in this world like it the second i realized my power i just got to do it and yeah. it's crazy like this that realization just how independent and powerful you can be on your own dude this is a place to play this is just the the creation space it's experience of all experience man yeah, yeah and any other any other concept of reality that people get lost in is just psychological drama yeah they say if you can visualize something you can make it your reality and it's just yeah. that you have to be able to picture yourself doing something yeah. and uh, I do lots of I, you know I talked to you before I've been doing meditation and stuff for a long time and so important I do meditation and visualization exercises and like Especially as a person who I felt really lost when I was younger. I didn't know what I I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted or what I felt like I deserved I could have or even like what my options were, I guess. It's like kind of a lost feeling. And uh, now I'm like, oh, anything, literally anything I want. All my job is to do is to decide what that thing is. Yeah. And then that gives me a, a goalpost. And then all I have to do is put one foot in front of the other to get to that goal. And the universe provides, man. Like it's here. It wants like what we want, I think. Yeah, well, we are it. Yeah, like that's that's there's that's the secret. You know, you are the universe. You're the you are the universe experiencing itself. You know, it's you know, it's that you're you Jason are. Jason stopped smoking weed. Yeah, but I did. we're still going to talk about the universe. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. I don't need that shit. I don't need anything. Like you know, I I once I started doing the process of meditating and removing all my attachments and compulsive desires from my existence, it was just like. 
it opens up your whole world. I've definitely gotten better, but the weed, like, I know a few years ago, if I was driving to your house, I would have my bowl with me in the car. Yeah. Or a joint lit up or smoking, and, like, I didn't even smoke this morning. Like, I need it less and less. Don't get me wrong. I still love the weed. It calms me right on. I love yeah, it. You know what I mean? But, like, I've definitely cooled my jets with a lot of, like, I don't need to constantly be in some other state, I guess. I'm not so miserable in my own state anymore, yeah. so... That's um, the ticket right there. Yeah. Know? It's it's to realize everything's perfect already, you know? Yeah. Life is suffering, but we're all suffering and it's okay. It's okay and everything's exactly how it's supposed to be. It doesn't need to change. Nothing needs to change. What do you got your phone on for, girl? Thought, look at it. The night the little moon is showing. Oh yeah? Ha, look at. Look at you. Oh, do the do this thing. Uh, uh. Yeah, I'm on an airplane. There you go. Boom, now it's really, really cut off. It was my frame. sister. Hopefully she's okay. Oh, is okay. it? Sp oh, I, well, yeah, I hope she's okay. You know, your sister's fucking wild. I love your sister. <laughs> you should bring yeah. her on here. I, I would love to have your sister on. She's always that would welcome. That a trip. Um, yeah. Yeah, she's, she is wild. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave that for you to <laughs> discover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like I was try trying to say before you interrupted me with your cell phone, God. Everything's perfect. That's perfect. You know, it it's like life is just this beautiful experience that we're having. And it's the, the concept of like, it could be better if is bullshit. But being you know? grateful. Things being should grateful, be. But things are bullshit. not so bad now. No, I think you can always find. Perfect. Yeah. I, I think being grateful for what I have has made yeah. it easier because I'm fine. I don't really need anything extra if I'm, I'm completely like, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, yeah. Um, it just. Yeah. That's why you see in, in Buddhism, right? They only have a robe and a bowl because they, they don't, need, don't anything. need anything because they are aware that anything they try to attach themselves to or grasp at or any concepts of reality that they try to hang on to are all just illusions and everything changes and everything dissolves away. And it's like anything you try to hang on to is just going to fucking disappear and then you're going to suffer more. And I, it's like if you just let it all go. I've gotten so much better about um, holding on to shit I don't need. Like I used to, and I think it's just from um, living in a, a lack of abundance. Yeah. Like just not feeling abundant. Um, I buy all kinds of stuff for my house, decorations, just stuff that was crowding it, crowding it up. And then I'd be sitting around with all my things and I'm like, wow, I don't like any of this stuff. Yeah, you don't It's need all it. just shit stuff. And so now I live in like, um, my life has been much more streamlined. I let go of clothes the second they don't fit me. Because then I make room for more clothes and stuff that does fit me. You know what I mean? And uh, my weight fluctuates a lot. And I used to just hold on to all this stuff. So I'd have it. And I'm like, no, I like to shop. And I have plenty. I can, you know what I mean? I get rid of that stuff and go get new stuff. And I'll feel way better and stuff that's fit for my life how it is now in this yeah. moment. Um, and then minimalism. My house is, just doesn't have the junk and the crap in it that it used to have. I, I don't go out making those weird purchases anymore. I just try to stay out of like the, the junk stores. Yeah. That just get you to buy, you know, they just junk decor and I don't know. You don't need friggin' knickknacks. Knickknacks are the bane of my existence. Mine. They're so dumb. Yeah, they knick are. Knickknacks are dumb. So, yeah. are, speaking of traveling, I also am not a huge fan of um, souvenirs. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. They're like, buy me something that reminds me. None of this junk reminds me of you. <laughs> but you go on your own trip and buy yourself something. I'm not uh, buying you something to eat. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like, even buy something for myself. Like I, don't I used it. to get, like we go na to nature a lot. Like like I just like going camping and hiking and meditating in, in some beautiful natural environments. And so I would like find a small rock, and that would be my thing. You yeah, know, that, collecting is neat hoarding. Yeah, and I stopped doing that. Even it's I was just collecting. like, no, I don't need. <laughs> any of it man like i don't even need a little pebble that is meaningless but it's like a reminder of the experience it's like the experience happened mm -hmm. maybe i'll it, there'll be a reminder at some point i'll recall it yeah. you know it's like it's just but there's the present moment to be experiencing anyways and that's a, just just a, that's just attachment to the past and attachment leads to suffering um i think it's so funny how if there's not a photo stamp or like an image of, yeah. of certain nights of my life like whom, how many nights have I just lost to the sands of time? Like I have yeah. no clue like what has happened unless there might be one little picture to spark the memory for the night. Or mm. yeah, but there's, I don't know. I found my, my funnest nights. We don't take any pictures. <laughs> That's because you're enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, you're in the moment. <laughs> you're in the present, right? You're experiencing instead of trying to 
and tr- instead of trying to hang on to it, you know, you just let it flow through you and, and experience the love of the universe, man. And that's really what we're all we're supposed to ever be doing. Anytime you're not doing that, you know, you're like lost in thought or you're lost in attachment. And it's like you're not experiencing things the way you could be experiencing things. I hate that feeling when I'm like so anxious and thoughtful that yeah. I'm not with my body anymore. I have to do I do tapping in the car sometimes because I'm like, okay. hey. Hey, I'm like, you're in there. Like, you're not yeah. floating around out there. I'm like, hey, we're in here. We're okay. Like, yeah. the tapping thing is interesting. It roots you. It grounds you back into your body. And it's like, hey, you're hot. Like, don't go off. Ooh, where are you going, girlfriend? Like, <laughs> um, I think. Yeah, that's what this is about right here. I always just have my mala in my hand or on my neck. And I just, you know, just anytime touch I it? touch it, it's just a reminder. You know, I am not the container. I am the light. Be Om mani padme om. Be the water. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the water doesn't choose to reflect the geese, neither do the geese choose to impose their image on the water. I read something today and it said, it's like, life has suffering in it. And it's like, you didn't do anything wrong though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy to feel like something like you've, there, I didn't, do, I've, we all have our life is what it is or, you know what I mean? And like, it just is what it is. You didn't do anything wrong. That changed my life. The yeah. first time I read the Four Noble Truths, I, uh, I was just like, oh, thank God. You know, because I feel like like I was just like so depressed and so hard on myself. And like I had this crazy internal dialogue going on and it was just like, what am I doing wrong? You know, like, why can't I just figure out how to be happy? Yeah. You know, why do I constantly have to be absorbed in my thoughts and suffering all the time? And it's just like, really, I just was like. If this is how life is, I just want to end it, man. You know, just like, it, like, like, let's end this suffering thing yeah. because I'm doing it wrong and I can't figure it out. And then the Buddha says the very first thing of Buddhism, man, life is suffering. Everyone's suffering. You have a body to exist in this world of, 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 of change, constant change is suffering. And it was just like this huge breath of relief, like, oh, I'm not really like that's the experience I'm not a we're fuck having. Up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fuck up. I'm just a human being. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's super powerful as well, especially when like, and that that's an attachment to wanting to be a per- away or wanting to be a person or the person yeah. you have in your head that's not real either. Yeah, aversion. <laughs> aversion. aversion. The opposite side of the coin of desire. Yeah, and I read another thing too. Like, there's all different facets of my personality, and they make up who I am as a whole. And when you try to stifle certain parts of your personality, you end up trapped, and you know what I mean. You're not. You're still not yourself. You know what I mean. And it ends up creating this like. There's a, there's a way to let all the different facets of your personality flow together. Mm. And, like, I can be the wild, fun, outgoing person I want to be. And I can also handle business and be professional when I need to and get the shit done that I need to get done to make myself, my life make sense. You know? Like, I can be all of those things. It's just finding the time, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. To, make, to make all of them. All of those different personalities, parts of your personality matter, I guess, is what... You know what I mean? That wildness. I think that to calm down is the ultimate, like, w- what we're all doing is kind of calming down, right? Yeah, as we get older we, we and calm start down. to decay. <laughs> but that wildness, <laughs> it's like a natural curiosity for life, I feel like. And I don't think that shutting that down completely is the answer either. No. Yeah. And really, I'm like we were talking about the multiple personality kind of thing, man. It's like we're always a different person. Every time you have these different experiences of the present moment, you're a different collection of of material and you're different you're you're at a different state mentally you know and it's like technically you're just a completely different entity moment to moment to moment and it's like trying to um trying to say this is my static image this is what i will be all the time is um ridiculous i mean it's just not real but people expect it of you you know they want you to be this object of changeless um of what their idea yeah their idea their idea of what you are right and it's like nobody's that you know you're not even your idea of what you are you know it's this just you're just this constantly changing thing experiencing the world in front of you and and uh you know like there's this there's this instant reaction that can occur you know and it's like you can allow that to happen or you can like try to like you know the practice that i follow is to note the reaction that i try to have and like laugh at it and go 
and now we proceed with love. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. like it's like, what the fuck did you just say to me? And it's like, you're the happens in your brain. You go, look at you thinking you're real. How adorable. I've just gotten a, be nice. I've gotten away from like a um, reactive state. Yeah, the reactive state is an to, unconscious state. I try to stay calm and think for a few minutes when things happen because. Rea- my reaction is you know what I mean and like yeah. uh, that's not the right reaction I think sometimes notating how you feel right taking a second to be like okay how do I feel do I want to freak out right now most of the time you don't want to freak out <laughs> you know like um, I'm trying to spit out what I'm trying to say here but it's, locked did, up. Yeah. it's locked up it's locked up Um, yeah. I think just the, the ability not to be non-reactive yeah. In life. I've, I've had things in my life that I've severely fucked up by being highly reactive to a situation. And I'm like, oh, damn, if I had given that even five minutes of thought, you know what I mean? Um, I probably would have had a different. They say don't be reactive. It's to be um, to respond. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, to, it's to not react is the goal. It's to respond to what's to your stimulus around you and appropriately. <laughs> yeah. Because the outside world. It's not the thing affecting you. It's your experience of the outside world and how you interpret it that's affecting you. You know, it's like um, one of the things I always love uh, giving Angela shit about, you know, she's like, I hope you make I make you happy or whatever. That Something like that goes along the lines. And I, I just say, no, I'm can't. the only yeah. one who can make me happy. The outside world isn't, you know, it's it's how I experience it that that she is can bring you joy but you yeah it's uh, have to decide if you're happy or not <laughs> yeah like but you know it's uh like someone can be saying the worst shit in the world to your face but if you don't speak the same language as them right okay you, <laughs> you're not interpreting their hostility and you're just like you know this guy say something you know it's like this it doesn't great. affect you but if you speak the language <laughs> and you understand what they're saying then you can say you, then you're allowing the outside world to well you can or you can like that it's a hard practice, you know, but you just go, it's cool. This person's dealing with their own shit, you know, and their own problems. And it's like, try to have this compassion towards their experience Good and compassion. their inner, you know, their, their inner suffering that's going on that they're expressing out to you kind of thing. But it's like, you're not letting that affect your inner well being because the only thing that can change this is you. Yeah. And that for that, me, that concept, you know, it's a, it's a complicated and kind of like, um, hard concept to explain properly other people do a way better job than i do no I, I definitely get what you're but saying it, it helped me so much whenever i realized that it's like th- nothing that i'm experiencing i can't seek happiness i can't grasp happiness i can't uh and like the outside world not being the way i think it should be is not a reason for me to cry about it all the time it's like no the outside world is things are and you are too yeah and i just am too <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's, it's not nothing should be a certain way things just are and me it's it's whenever my eternal image of what i think things should be doesn't match up with the way things are that it you causes then begin ego to, issues yeah right? then you begin to suffer you know yeah. and it's just like oh my god but yeah it's just you know again com- complicated and diluted um, I, I had a moment like that recently with my sister, actually. You know, we're sisters, so we're going to fight constantly. It just is a thing. Yeah, but it's family. I had this moment where, like, she's really pissing me off. She's been drinking, and you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm stone sober. I'm at home, and I'm just like, I can be just be a bitch right now, what I want to do. Yeah. You know, what I, like, how I wanted to react, and I was, or react. And then I was like, actually, I was like, I need to be, like, show compassion and love. And I was like, just come inside and go lay down. Let's not argue. You know what I mean? And like, I, well, what I wanted to tell her was so different from something. My, my brain was just like, that's not going to help. You know what I mean? Like the, what you, how you want to freak out on her. No one's going to hear you when in that state of mind anyway. It's, it says a lot more about me for freaking out on her when she's in that state than me just saying, come rest and we'll talk when you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm just getting there. I think you look mature a little bit. I feel crazy for like when I was younger and my mental state I was drinking a lot and you know I get in these crazy fights with boyfriends and like shit would blow up way out of like proportion or what and I just do not have that in my life anymore yeah it doesn't exist and it isn't allowed to exist you know like things just don't get crazy like that I'm just more thoughtful yeah get older and it's just like um, I'm contributing to this 
with my shitty attitude and smart ass little comebacks. <laughs> you know what I mean? And what, same thing when you think the world's doing all bad. I don't know where we're taught that some shitty comment is going to help make it better or some passive aggressive statement, you know? Yeah. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah. you got to be like the kindness and the goodness, even when it like you have to be the better person, which yeah. sucks sometimes. Stop defending your ego, right? Like thinking that that's going to help anything. That's really what it comes down to, right? You're getting in an argument with somebody and they want to shit on you to like try to get a rise out of you and you're like, don't you know who I am? You can't just say that or about me. I could me. say something even mean. Yeah, or I could say, yeah, exactly. I like delve into the, tr- into the treasure chest over here of info I've got yeah. <laughs> and put it together so eloquently that you might cry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't act like that anymore, but I that used to. That doesn't solve problems, <laughs> you know? It just creates more problems. And uh, yeah, it just, yeah, it's it's not good for the world. It's not good for you personally, right? You're yeah, just, it builds you're, up like anger inside yeah. of you. Who's angry after all that? Like, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely have found more peace in life. I think, like, as you know, I think creating, doing something with yourself positive with all that energy, I think, is, like, because think of all the energy, negative energy, from, and just from the experiences you've had in life, you know what I mean? And, like, you could do something, anything you want with that energy. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's what we're here for, you know, to create infinite possibilities. And, uh... It's just, uh, there's this illusion that, that you have to be somebody on top of it, you know, that you have to adhere to these rules and this object of what the world sees you as. I love where I'm at right now. Cause I know I have a goal, you know what I mean? But there is like no roadmap, <laughs> which is good. Like yeah. I'm on a path, but there's not a map. If that makes sense. I'm just kind of like, then I know where I want to follow it anyways. Yeah. And I just, I know where I want to be, but it's like very, uh, I feel like I have a lot of freedom and uh, opportunities right now. I don't know. The, the world's not such a bad place. No. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> it's it's in here that gets bad. You know, it's your perception of everything that gets bad, man. You know, it's all just psychological drama. For me personally, I just uh, I have it in my heart that you know, there's only one true energy out there, and that's love. And everything else is just. Uh, just your own mind playing tricks on you you know people do horrible things because they their perceptions all skewed they're not seeing the world clearly they're seeing it through this fucked up filter and uh and that's what brings any kind of negative space into the world but the world itself it's just love and if you just allow yourself to be loved and to love everything then it just, all of a sudden, it just opens up. You get to experience this game you came here to experience in the first place the way it's supposed to be, you know? Well, who's to say what that is? It's whatever we want. Yeah, well, <laughs> just, just uh, by that, I mean just without the the filter of your ego over your own perception of reality. You know, everybody goes around thinking things should be a certain way or, you know, they have this, they, they brought up with certain ideologies and... Uh, you know, they they come across these these concepts and they want to impose that onto the onto their. I'm guilty. Their, I'm yeah, such an world. idealist. I did yeah. not grow up in an ideal like home situation at all. And mm. like my I had two. My mom's married to a lady. I was raised by two moms. My dad was like kind of in and out, and he's cool now, but um, just raised differently. But that being said, like I've always had this really I purest idealist form like I wanted to get married and have kids by a certain age and I'm sure the people who know me think that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> that's not how it's turned out but um I really that's still when I think of like my ideal I'm like I still I'm like oh and then like when I'm thinking my life goals and stuff I'll still find a husband and have a baby you know what I mean it still pops <laughs> up in there and I'm like but that might not be my path hmm. which would be fine too you know what I mean but it's a very comforting uh, I'm an idealist. It's so funny. And I'm very creative idealist, but uh, my, my creature comforts are, are very like storybook fifties ideals. It's funny. And it's not, they're not my ideals. I think yeah. it's stuff that I thought felt normal as a kid from not, from having such an abnormal upbringing. Um, I just wanted a fucking normal life, <laughs> like more than anything. I was like, but I mean, I'm not like, you know me, I'm not going to be normal. No, <laughs> Well, that's instinctual too, you know. I mean, there's a drive within us to to procreate and to have a partner. I mean, it's fulfilling. Uh, I'm at a point right now where my life is so good and comfortable. I've worked so hard to get it where I'm, and I'm all alone in my, you know what I mean, in my space. And 
I'm just at the point now where, like, it's dating that I'm like, who would I possibly invite in here to fuck all this up? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I'm see, good. That's like, the <laughs> best place to be. I'm so you good. Know? Like, you, you have to be, you, see, you have to learn to love yourself yeah. before you can love, learn to I'll love anybody else. I'll give myself a big else. hug if I need a big hug. I'm like, I'm not be. I'm not above it, <laughs> but I feel better now alone. And for a long time, I think um, I love being in a relationship. I love love. Mm. It's so juicy and lovely. And <laughs> I just happen to get all way lost up, lost, lost in it in the yeah. past, you know? So like, I don't ever want to, I want to stay in my truth and be my own person who matters too, and have something that I bring. I don't ever just want to be an accessory girlfriend again. You know, I want to be yeah. my own human being. I'm a woman who has things that I do that are, powerful and i hope it inspires other women to to do things for themselves too yeah yeah like no that's that's the that's the place right there you know and just you're you you find your center yourself your true self and you're just like uh you don't need a person to attach to or to you know it's like unless you're adding to my world unless you're like bringing something then to I the table yeah. yeah it's like why am i gonna you're bother? taking up space for something else beautiful that could yeah. be here if you're if it ain't right that's the other thing too is like make mistakes faster <laughs> you know what i mean like make them faster but realize if you've made a decision you did wrong and get the fuck out of there. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like it's life is only so long. And I used to sit in these um, uncomfortable spaces sometimes where I was afraid to speak up or would be uncomfortable because I didn't know I deserved better than being uncomfortable. I just thought I had to go through that. And you don't. You can literally speak up at any point and be like, this ain't it. Yeah. The second, usually the second you feel like that, the very first second that you feel like that is the second that you should speak up and say that this mm -hmm. ain't it. No, that's... And I think it's a power a lot of people don't realize. I never realized I, I had the power to say no to things in life or, you know, or like to an exper experience at all. You can literally get up and walk out of a room if you're uncomfortable in it and kick people away from you who are draining your soul and energy at any time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, you don't need anybody or anything. And... And then that's part of the that's part of the illusion of this reality is that you you're supposed to just collect people and collect things. Oh, and, you're like born alone yeah, and then you die alone, right? That's it. So it's like <laughs> anybody that you allow into your world, anybody that you allow to be a part of this experience with you, they should really be adding to the experience, not draining on your resources and draining on your energies and trying. You know, it's like it's one thing to ask of it, ask favors and exchange favors with each other and help each other out and lift each other up. That's beautiful, you know, but it's when a, when a person becomes a burden to you constantly needing something without ever being able to return it and reciprocate back. Or even if you just feel like you can't be the calmest version of yourself. Sometimes I found like with other people around, I just can't wait for them to leave. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that feeling where you're just like, oh, God, I can't wait to just be all alone again. Um, yeah. My favorite people are the people I feel as comfortable as when I'm all alone. Yeah. If I can like nap in front of you. <laughs> we're friends <laughs> that's it right yeah. there yeah. you don't gotta think about it you don't gotta worry about them you know they're 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 tandled uh, i've i've been doing that with my reality a lot lately you know the people that i really want around me on a regular basis it's like uh there's there's not a lot of them it's you know, there's like a vetting quality. process there's a th i go there's through, a vetting process yeah, i don't I really, let anybody in my like um like my home space is such a protected space and I'm so weird. Like I never I have all this space to invite people over and yeah. I don't, I just, I'm not, I don't throw a host things like that. I don't know. I, I, prefer, I prefer to be alone. <laughs> you should. This is good. I like talking to you. Um, I like talking I'm like, this to you. is good. <laughs> this works. I've been looking forward to having you over here. I'm sorry I that I love being around you. I'm sorry that it took me so long to make it over. Here. I've been working like a dog. Dude, life's hard. You know, it's, it, it's, fucking everything just is out of control it's total we live in total chaos and you know we just make do nothing's ever like like we were saying the way it should be yeah. well in a perfect world everything would just line up for me and it's like i can't Wouldn't believe be everything's great? just lining up exactly the way i expect it to it's just like no it never does we just make do and uh and Some be thankful make for cooler it dues than others <laughs> uh, yeah well you know it's uh at least it seems like that from the outside, you know. But it's, uh, no, it's beautiful. And, uh, yeah. I know you got to get somewhere, too. I got to go back to the, to, the, to the job, you know, and go, do you know what I do over there? You are uh, kind of an admin 
for some uh, some naughty peoples? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call them naughty. Well, yeah, actually, the ones that I usually end up seeing are naughty. Yeah. But, like, the stuff I see is just insane. And yeah. it's, I think this goes my ability to, like, uh, deal with traumatic <laughs> instances and then just veil it. Like, there's a few things that I'll see. Um, so, like, we have a full fo- folder I have to look at called PPB. Okay. And that stands for pee, poo, or blood. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and I have another f- file called a possible squirt. <laughs> 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 and so, like, a part of my job is deciding, like, what's going on here. And, um, like, last week, oh, this was so funny. My grandma was in town, so my mom came over, and I'm in my office working, and I'm like, I know, guys, really, like, do not come in here. And my mom's like, I've seen some things. And I was like, Mom? I'm like, the the account I'm looking at right now, I was like, this person, I'm writing it up to legal, and it's like, they have 10 to 12 glow sticks in their butthole. I was like, so have you seen this before, Mom? Because I have never seen this before, you know? Jeez, and it's It's, my job. Yeah, so like, there's just, it's... I like my job, but, and thank goodness, like, I do have that. I can't, I really can't remember a lot of the things that I see because there's just so much of it. But oh. when I first started and started seeing gnarly things, I remember, like, trying to go to bed after my shift and there'd be, like, grr, 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 this coming towards my face, like, yeah. just the image of it. It goes away, and um, I have good insurance, <laughs> good therapy. Yeah. So, yeah, they offer That's us. That's harsh on your mind, well, man. Well, they do, they actually, not only, like, do we have great insurance, but they do offer us, um, like, constant emotional coaching and stuff because they know they're like you guys use some stuff like no one should have to see and it's true i love that the company i work with um has boundaries and they think that everyone you know what i mean responsibly everyone's a human sexuality is a human nature uh, and they want people to be responsible about it and we work with the fbi for when things are really bad and there's stuff that shouldn't Uh, be on there they hand it right over to, to the government we're like go get them yeah and i like i that makes me feel good about working for a company that works with um, they make sure no kids ever end up on the site or anything like that. You yeah, know, of like, and which that's f- I fuck with their policies and procedures for sure. Um, my job is just, it's funny. It's funny. I guess, <laughs> I, I guess. A, a lot of it, there's just like very little time that I have to actually look at that, like gross stuff, I guess. And yeah. then the rest of it's kind of administration and organizing data and analysis and stuff. But yeah, it sticks in your brain, man. That's pretty crazy it's funny what doesn't stick in my brain and then yeah. everyone's so there'll just be like a uh, image and it's like usually like i work till midnight so, so like till i want to lay down and go to bed and then like i'll try to lay down and the image is just like ding 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 i'm like put on a meditation we're, we're yeah. gonna clear our mind of this one I'm like no the stuff you put in there it's uh i've been i've been on no porn no masturbation, no none of that thing for a while now, and it's what? been amazing. Honestly, it was really hard at first. I was like, well, "Why?" Uh, <laughs> really but, I never uh, really looked at porn before I had this job, so oh, like, yeah? it's like uh, I'm like a page one porn person for sure. It doesn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't ever go to like a deep search. Yeah. So there's certain stuff like I had no clue about, oh, but yeah. I look at it like a doctor. I feel like, oh, there's a technical term for that, and I'm like, yeah. just keep looking. Did this happen? Yes. Keep scrolling. But you don't masturbate. Yeah, well, you have it's part of that Buddhist practice. Yeah, so it's like, uh, but it's, you know, it's mainly about the whole, the fantasizing and the watching the porn and like allowing those thoughts to manifest in your head and then responding to them and giving them power, and like, uh, it's an attachment you know, as well. I it's guess. attachment, yeah, and like, yeah, it's been amazing letting that all go. You know, like, uh, I would be easy. I mean, I never got into it. Like, it's not spinning it. around in there anymore. Like, it was really hard for a while, and it was like, <laughs> and uh, I and, was so yeah. against porn when I was younger. I broke uh, up with a guy one time, and I threw his whole porn, <laughs> porn collection away on my way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> like years and years and years collection of like porn. They don't even make it like that anymore. You know what I mean? I was like, think. Oh, wow. I felt evil a little bit for that. That is evil. Just yoinked it in the trash. I yeeted it. He was attached to those things. (laughs) I yeeted it right in the trash. Uh, (laughs) He's like, where did you hide him? I was like, they're not hidden. They're gone forever. Sorry. Damn, (laughs) ruthless. That's ruthless. Yeah. Uh, I also love kept my, or took my spices home in that oh, really? break. I did, threw his porn away and took all the spices. In a breakup, <laughs> he threw his porn away? Oh, that's mean. He needed those more than ever. Evil. Yeah, I know what I was doing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You're a mean one. Mm, and I, uh, that's mean. It's, it's been a few years. I've evolved a little bit. Yeah. yeah that's what we do, you know. Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't throw away anyone's shit. You know, this life and all of our all of our bullshit's just a growing process. I it's would for still us take to the learn. spices. You still take the spices. 
I dig it. <laughs> right? I dig it. Is that petty? Yeah. You know, <laughs> not, if it's, not if it's what you like, man, you know? Got to go more and more not spices. Have, now we're going to have these flavors again. No. <laughs> he wasn't going to cook with them here. We both know that. Uh, yeah, man, that's funny. But, all right, well... I'm going to get you out of here. Okay. I gotta we're go. gonna keep this chat. is way more fun than a job job. I know, right? It's, Dude, it's a blast. I just love doing it. And just hanging out and talking shit. And I just, I, I, I'm i going to just keep on doing it. Hopefully it makes me money one day, but, you, should you know, go on. whatever. It's it's just for fun. I love I love catching up with my friends and learning about my friends. And I, I'll link you up with one of my lines of business that's not in the adult section, but yeah. we, um, you can pop your uh, whole podcast on there give a whole other I will yeah that's what it's for <laughs> yeah I, I put yeah. it I put it literally everywhere it's on all the all the podcast apps and, and it'll allow you to stream live too so you could, oh, well, you could be live right oh, now yeah. okay yeah I'll, I, I'll send you over some deets I don't know if I'll, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever do the live stream thing it's uh, a lot to ask people to like show up at a scheduled time and watch me talk I mean, it's hard to get musicians to show up on time to things Yes. You don't say. <laughs> no. It, dude, it's, and especially now with the scheduling, like my, with my work going on, it's just, it's ridiculous. I'm going to be doing, um, I got, I got Kill Feather coming on. Okay. Uh, but it's like, uh, they don't, you know, their, their, their schedules are so out of whack that it's like, we're going to be doing it at like, we're gonna start at like nine at night <laughs> to do, good. to do the freaking podcast because I got to wait for everybody to get off work. And uh, well, it was hard making our schedules work. Yeah, no, like that's it. that's the game I play, dude. It's wild, and it fucking drives Angela nuts because it's constantly like shifting the podcasts over and bouncing them all over the place, and like trying to make it work. And it's like this one time, it's the only time it's going to work for everybody. It has to happen on this day, and then they go, "Oh man, something came up. We're going to have to cancel." I was trying so hard not to do that today. So we've been trying to get this together all week, and then my boss is like, "Hey, um, we're moving you over into a new training, and you have a new schedule. One to nine. I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm like, well, we'll make all. I was like, I want to do all of it. <laughs> That's yeah. what I told him. I was like, I have another plan. I was like, but I want to do everything. So like, we'll make it all happen. That's awesome, and though. Here we are. <laughs> I'm glad you're moving up in the world. Oh. You deserve it. You're such a, you. a wonderful, beautiful person. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that and yeah. agree. <laughs> you are. You know, it's, Thank it's, you. it's a, a privilege to be your friend. And you too. You know? Yeah, I'd love you guys to come out to the next art show. That would be really fun. We really wanted to make it to the last one, but we were in Arkansas. Well, that's okay. This first Friday, again, it will be at the uh, Kodo studio. Is it? Yep. It's a downtown across from the Arts Factory. Oh. So. You heard that. First Friday, downtown across from the Arts Factory at Kodo? Yep. Yeah. Kodo. It's an art show called, it's art show put on by the Leisure Studio, and it's a collective, um, these girls are, they put the show on, they just started last month, and they just did such a great job. They do cocktails, we've sangria, we had a DJ in there, and then it's just uh, 10 curated artists. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. You know what we got to do? Hmm. We got to get Angela's fucking art into one of these things, because yeah. she has so many paintings stacked up. And she's, yeah. her confidence isn't right where she's like, I don't know. I just, you know, it's not like, and I'm like, your art's beautiful and go put yourself out there. The hardest part is literally, and I still struggle with this too. It's like when, mm -hmm. even when, before we came, you're like, oh, grab a couple pieces. I was like, oh, well I have like that show I did that was set up a certain way. So like those pieces are cohesive and look, look good together. But like just deciding to share some stuff like certain pieces especially when i'm kind of locked into a style right now yeah and but i still love to do this other goofy loud obnoxious stuff and the hardest part of the entire process is that decision to share it with people because you don't know how it's going to be received and i found that like like i said if you show up and you put it out there art is subjective and like someone will connect yeah. Someone will maybe not everybody you know what i mean but someone will connect and the hardest it's just being brave enough to share it yeah. And once you overcome that step, like the universe provides. You, if you show up, it shows up for you. And but you have to show up, you know. And like Angela, I could definitely hook her up with with some of my girls who, who put their art shows on, and I'm sure there'll be a show where she fits in quite nicely, you know. But it, you gotta be have enough. Uh, it is it's self esteem or confidence or. Just belief in yourself. I don't even feel, feel like you need to be confident or have self-esteem. But if you at least believe in yourself. That's it. Yeah. 
yeah, it's uh, it's scary. It's always scary, you know. But you got to put your stuff out there. You got to keep it going, and eventually it'll turn into something. And that's with like all forms of of art. You know what I mean? Music. I have musician friends. I've I have music I've made I've never put out, yeah. and so it's scary. You're very very vulnerable, you know. But um. That's what being an artist is. Mm-hmm. You know? And you're an artist. Creating you get to be like the. super hard. I think it's so tight. Like for my show last month, I was like, what am I going to wear? I was like, ha, it doesn't matter because I'm an artist. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, can, I can do whatever I want, be as crazy as I want, or yeah. wear whatever the hell I want. I'm an artist. I have the funnest job ever. Like, I can, ultimate form of expression. Whatever I do is okay. Yeah. The worst is chopping up the She's weird. She's an artist. <laughs> like, sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. not judged like that. I don't know. Yeah. Even if you are judged, who cares? Mm, That's their own judged. bullshit. Too many people go around saying everything sucks, and I don't like having anything to do with that, you know? It's uh, it's so easy to just be like, I'm so cool, and that's just stupid, and I don't do anything that's stupid, which means I don't do anything at all, because I'm so fucking cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I can be judgy sometimes. Sometimes I judge, my intentional, my initial reaction is to judge things, but then if you give me like three minutes, then I'll, be, I'll accept anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just need a few minutes sometimes to warm up. <laughs> but it is my first reaction, be like, ah. Oh, yeah. 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 Catch myself. No, <laughs> gotta put the love out there. All right, let's get you out of here because so we're gonna keep me. talking and talking and talking. Yeah, and, and I just, really gotta go. Yeah, I know you do. It's and I now said the I'd minute. Get you, I said I'd get you out of here on time, you and did, I'm gonna do it. You're doing beautifully. Yeah. Well, uh, you're just gonna have to come back on and talk more with me. We can do this know? regularly. Yeah, I would love that. You know? <laughs> I'd love to update can... you all the time with what my new projects will be. Absolutely. Yeah. Bring in more art, share more art, share more projects. I, I can. <laughs> you know? So uh, let's do the damn thing. How about it, right? All right. Uh, thanks for watching. To the Fullest with Jason Froberg on Space Brain Station. Uh, subscribe. Give us a like. Ring the bell. Follow us on social media. Ding, 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 Follow ding, ding, ding. Rocky on social media. Mm -hmm. Recall Batdorf. And uh, you got Instagram. You got Facebook and all that jazz. We, she's got a show at the Kodo. Am I saying that right? Um, yep, it's at Kodo, uh, 8 East Charleston, right next door to the Cornish Pasty. And it'll be on first Friday for November. Uh, it starts around 6 or 7. And like I said, we'll have DJs, hors d'oeuvres, cocktails come through. Buy some art. Check out some beautiful stuff that they show. And That's you're going to be at uh, Art Basel in Miami yep. Beach as well coming up soon, yep. right? Yep. December. I'm showing December 1st through 5th at the Red Dot in Miami. Uh, and that's for the Art Basel weekend, uh, which is a huge... I'm just so excited about that show. It's just going to be out of this world. That's awesome. It's like one of the biggest in the entire world. I'm so stoked for you. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see some pictures of it. I can't wait to make the piece that I'm going to show for it. It's oh, yeah, you yet. haven't made a piece for it it's yet? It's okay. I work well under pressure. Yeah. <laughs> pressure creates diamonds. I think so. It does. I like I like that. Um, I like a deadline. A deadline is good for me. For artists, it is I pull out some shit crucial. out of my ass on a deadline. Yeah. I'm you just have to say, this date, I'm done with it. I can't touch it anymore. It's done. I'm moving on to the next thing because I'll do it forever. I'll just keep adding and saying it's not ready. Yeah, I, it's also like a, yeah, seal your, if I seal my paintings also, then I'm like, oh, it's done. Can't add anything anymore now. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you put a clear coat over it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Awesome. <laughs> well, get the fuck out of I, here, I'm all like right? Leaving. This I'm has leaving. been To The Fullest. <laughs> Love you, bud. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thanks for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.